and in this lecture we're going to be talking about flexi binding in Moho. So flexi binding is found here in the bones menu and we'll talk a little bit about the bones menu later on in these tutorials. But as you can see right here, use selected bones for flexi binding. It's a method that allows you to quickly bind your rig. Flexi binding has always been around, but it was perfected in Anime Studio 9.5. So let's take a look at this character here that was created by Mike Roberts. This character is made completely up of images that were imported from Photoshop. So as you can see here, this whole character was drawn in Photoshop and then imported into Moho. So in order for flexi binding to work, it uses bone strength. So if I hit Z on my keyboard to use my manipulate bones tool, you can see that all over the body, there are the little semicircles that let me know that there's bone strength. So just like what we learned, bone strength influences anything that it touches, whether it be vector or whether it be images. So in this case, we have a character that's made completely up of images. So for example, for the right arm here, we have the bottom of the arm and the top of the arm. So real quick, I'm going to take off the bones and to show you, we have the bottom arm and we have the top arm. And as you can see there, those are two separate layers. So flexi binding is going to be actually your number one binding method when it comes to binding your imagery. So if you are a children's story illustrator and you want to bring your animation to life, flexi binding is going to be the best binding method in order to do this. So as you can see here, as I move these bones around, you have a lot of flexibility in the legs and in the arms and the torso. If I play out the animation, you can see how the flexi binding method works and how awesome this animation looks. But the one thing to know about flexi binding, in order for it to work, each layer has to be bound to a bone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this character that has bones bound to each part of its body and I'm going to unbind everything so I can show you an example of how flexi binding works. So now what I did is I unbound everything so there's no more flexi binding being used. Now let's go ahead and manipulate all of these bones and see what happens. As you can see, everything is distorting. All of the images are pulling apart. And this is by default what happens when the bone strength is influencing other parts of the body. So flexi binding allows me to select each and every one of the layers to flexi bind those layers separately. So like I was saying a little bit about the offset bone tool, what you had to do in the old anime studio days is you had to separate each one of these bones far enough apart that the bones wouldn't influence other parts of the imagery on your character. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you two examples of flexi binding. I'm gonna do one for the arm and the other for this leg right here. And then I'm gonna speed up this video because we're not quite ready to get into the rigging section yet to show how everything's gonna look with its flexi bound. However, I will have the video sped up enough so you can still see what is going on. So one of the first things that we're gonna do is we're going to just take a look at the layers. So I'm gonna highlight the bone that I want to work with first and right below it, I could see I have my arm layer. So I'm gonna do a keyboard shortcut instead of having to go through and look through the layers, I'm gonna do an alt right click on this image. And as you can see, it's gonna take me straight to that layer. So I have right upper arm. As you can see, the layers are separated for the right arm, for the upper arm, and the lower arm. Because that's how the artist wanted to separate his layers. So now what I'm going to do to bind this bone to this layer, right upper arm, is I'm gonna come up here to my bone menu, and I'm going to select this option, use selected bones for flexi binding or use the keyboard control shift F, which I use the keyboard shortcut. So now the next one that I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna select the next bone down here, and I can see that the right arm now, the right arm open, is actually made up of two bones. So this one controlling the forearm, this one controlling the hand, but it's the one layer. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm going to select that bone with my select bone tool, then I'm gonna hold shift and select this bone and now I'm gonna do Control shift f on my keyboard, and now those bones will be bound. So to test this, I'm gonna use my Manipulate Bones tool, or Z on the keyboard, and I'm going to move this around. And as you can see, for the arm itself, it's working pretty good. But like I said, because everything is affected by bone influence, for flexi binding to work, every layer has to be bound to a bone. So now let's go to the pants here. 
So to select that layer, I'm going to Alt right click and let's see how this layer is made. So you can see here that this whole leg is one big layer. So the bones that I'm going to bind are all of these bones that are inside of that leg. And I'm gonna do it all at one time. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to bring up my select bone, click on the bone, hold shift, click on this bone, still holding shift, click this bone, click this bone, click this bone, because I can see all the bones there in the leg. Now I'm gonna hit control shift F, and now all those bones are now bound. So now when I manipulate this bone, you can see that the leg is moving pretty well there. There's still a little bit of distortion, but again, that's because everything is not yet bound. So what I'm gonna do from here is speed this video up so you can see how everything else is gonna be quickly flexi-bound. All right, so that is now all flexi bound. So when I go through now and I test this with my manipulate bones tool, that's all moving good. That's moving good. The head's moving good, the leg. Okay, so there's a little bit of tearing still on the legs here. And this is one thing that I want to mention. It is because of the strength that is there on the target bones. Target bones do not need strength. Originally, the animator had it working with strength. I'm not too sure how, but you don't want to have strength for your target bones. So you can see there as I'm reducing, that's already coming back in there. So now when I hit play on this animation, let's go ahead and play it out. You can see everything's flexi bound, everything is good to go. And that is how you do flexi binding in Moho. Be sure and join me in the next lecture where we go over point binding. I'll see you there.